welcome everybody to our session today, uh, where the Matt, <laughs> Matt Fazio from our good friends at Donnelly Bolin and Associates. It's an accounting and business consulting firm located here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Matt is the marketing director, marketing whiz extraordinaire, and he is going to bring all kinds of great tips and information to you and for small business people everywhere about how to market your business, right? Um, the COVID has moved everybody into the digital world, right? We're all there now. Your customers are there now. If you don't think that they are, they actually are, and they are always going to be. They're not going away. This is where they're looking for you. And so if you have not had the opportunity or the skill set or the confidence to uh, create a, any type of a digital presence for your business, um, now is really the time to do it. And Matt's going to talk to you about some very low cost or no cost uh, alternatives, tools that are available out there for any small business person to use, whether you're a one person shop or a three person shop or a five person shop, whatever it is, um, he's going to share some great information for you about that. So with that, I will turn it over to Matt. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, as Mike said, I am Matt Fazio. I work at Donnelly Bolin and Associates. I've been working here for almost 10 years now. And I'm really excited about today's session. Uh, a couple of people were on the call a little bit earlier, but if you weren't, I, I wanna reiterate something that I said to Mike right away. And that is, uh, I, I've been dealing with a lot of clients recently who are bringing up the same topic. And that is, hey, these are great resources, but they all cost money. So what doesn't cost money? And if you are a small business owner or you work for a not-for-profit, you might be looking to um, try to save money and you want to use the resources that you can without breaking the bank. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today, how to use free digital resources to enhance your marketing. Uh, a couple housekeeping items before I dive into the presentation. There is a chat pod and a Q&A pod. I, I typically get like a little uh, alert about those things, but um, Mike and Claire, if you see anything that's good in the chat pod or the Q&A pod that I need to respond to, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, I, I really want this to be as interactive as possible. I want to try to make sure that this hour-long presentation is helpful for you. And as soon as this ends, boom, you, you are moving forward and you know the direction that you want to take. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to dive right in. First thing up here. This is not the agenda, okay? These are the things that I'm not gonna be talking to you about today because sometimes when you look and say, free digital resources, well, what is he gonna be talking about? Sometimes it's really good to say, here are the things that I'm not gonna cover. One, I'm not gonna talk to you about why we market. You're all here on a marketing related call, okay? So there are plenty of resources out there that talk to you about the benefits of marketing. I believe it foundation to my core. I know that it works, but we're not going to be talking about that today. Number two, each one of these resources has an add-on. There are premium versions. You could go from spending $0 to spending $10 a month or $20 a month or a couple hundred dollars a year, whatever. I'm not going to talk to you about the add-ons today, okay? Even though I use all the products that I'm going to be talking to you about today, and some of them I do have the, the premium versions, I'm not here to sell you anything. Okay, so I'm trying to make this one hour session based on completely free resources. Okay, so yes, there are always opportunities. My suggestion is stick your toe in the water by using the free version. And then if you really like it, um, it's not me telling you, if you really like it, then you can uh, think about an add-on. And then the third and final piece that I'm not going to be talking about are paid ads. Paid ads are great and in many cases they work. We use paid ads, I've used paid ads for clients of ours. And I think that there is a tremendous benefit. But as number two talks about, we're not looking for the, any of the premium versions. We're not looking for any of the add-ons. And we're certainly not looking for the paid ads. So what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about three major sessions. I'm really big on conceptualizing ideas. So we're going to be talking about direct marketing, social networks, and web. And these are the three pillars that we're going to be talking about throughout today's um, meeting. Number one is going to be on direct marketing. And in some ways we're splitting hairs with some of these things and I understand that and that's okay. But just in terms of trying to group things together, I think it's helpful. 
Direct marketing is reaching people you know. This is mainly by email. So I know you, your email address and I'm trying to reach you, I'm sending you an email. Sure, sometimes it gets caught in spam or it goes into another one of your different folders on Google, but at the same time, it's, it feels like it's one-to-one. -one. So that's how you're gonna direct, you're gonna use direct marketing. Number two is gonna be social networks. Engaging uh, to your social networks and making sure that you're optimizing those uh, different things to use on social networks. I'm not going to be telling you, hey, you should use Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or LinkedIn. I'm going to be talking to you about leveraging your existing social media. And then third and finally, when we're talking about web, optimizing your online presence. When people are finding you online, what do they know about? What do they, what do they find out about you? Um, and I, I think that that's that's going to be another really, really relevant thing, especially to start out uh, startup businesses, businesses that are just starting out that don't really have much of a web presence. So, direct marketing. Here are the three things that I'm going to be covering with you today in direct marketing. So direct marketing is our first pillar, and we're going to be talking about HubSpot, MailChimp, and Pexels and Unsplash. I'm putting those together. So hosting a CRM is essential. Uh, to reaching your clients on a routine basis. Um, MailChimp, sending out emails consistently to your contact base and Pexels and Unsplash using sock photos to enhance your messaging. I have our first question here. Um, you are gonna be getting a poll question. It's super simple. Do you currently use a CRM? CRM is, uh, Client relationship, client relationship management system. Sometimes people talk about it as a CMS, uh, contact management system. But are you using something that you're tracking all of your engagements with other people? So I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. Uh, there's still people coming in to answer that. And I'm gonna share the results. 63% said no. That's what we're here for today, right? Um, so uh, we currently use HubSpot here. We used uh, an Intuit product for a very long time called QuickBase, and we recently switched to HubSpot a little over a year ago, and we are very happy with it. Uh, as I said before, we do use some of the premium versions. We do have a premium version of HubSpot, but I looked into the free version, and I actually signed up for a free version uh, for this actual session today so that I can learn what you can do. You can host all of your contacts directly in here. This is a simple place that isn't Excel. And for people out there who are using Excel, it's not the worst thing in the world, but really you could be doing something a lot better. This is a much more robust system. And this is something that you can manipulate your data a lot easier in, in real time. So you can create reports, memorize those reports and, and use that uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, it, and I, I see Audi in Cool Free here today too. Oh, okay, uh, just some people here, that's great. Um, so the, also in HubSpot there, there is labeling. One of the things I really love about HubSpot is you can label sets and subsets and put people in multiple groups. So um, Donnelly Bolin Associates, we provide a whole suite of services. So we provide accounting services, taxes, and communication services, operations, a lot of different things. What HubSpot allows us to do is label people differently. So for example, you're a communications client with us, and we checked off a little box in HubSpot labeling you as one of the communications people. So we can just export that list and send you something directly. So you can really not just host these things on here, but actually use them. And that's the third and final point in here, exporting. You take the info and use it in different ways. I think HubSpot is a really great place to start. If you're not using a CRM right now, you should start. Uh, they have a lot of features in their free version that can allow you to separate businesses with individual contacts and to, to group things together make it easier to start reaching your people. Mike? Matt, what are some other examples of uh, these types of services? Like Hootsuite, I think, is one. Well, not sure so, it does everything that HubSpot does. What are some so others? You know, you know what? Um, 
there, it, it really depends on how integrated you want to get. One of the nice things about HubSpot is um, when you when you're trying to start out as just a a place for your contacts, I think that the thing that you're looking to do is you're looking to have all the people, all of the labels that you want with them, and ways to extract that information as quickly as possible. So if if it's inc incredibly cumbersome to use something, then it's really hard. There are great things like Hootsuite, there's Salesforce, there are a ton of other things. A lot of them just cost a lot of money. I really like HubSpot uh, because the free version offers you a lot of flexibility and a place to get started. So right now, let's say you started your business a year ago and you only have email addresses and contact information for 40 people. Okay start somewhere. And starting on Excel really limits what you can do and how you can manipulate your data. And I think that using something like this would, would really help. Uh, there you also wrote in here, active campaign and constant contact are some other popular examples similar to HubSpot. Sure. We, um, one of the things about constant contact is there's no free version of constant contact. Uh, we personally use constant contact here, but again, trying to look at that absolute free models. There's no freemium version of uh, constant contact. I think it's so important to have this. If I've talked to anybody about marketing previously, I always suggest that you um, segment your customers into different categories and that you are reaching out to them on some type of a scheduled basis, um, you know, regularly, because you want to keep them in, keep you in their mind, you know, share information, interesting things, these webinars, um, interesting articles that you think pertain to their business, whatever it is, um, because that, even if they haven't, they're not gonna buy something else from you, which they might do, um, they may give you a referral. So you definitely totally. wanna be doing this. Yeah, uh, here are my three tips and takeaways from HubSpot. Uh, th this is actually a screenshot up here in the middle of the screen that says all companies, my companies and DBA active clients. Uh, this is just, I, I obviously didn't want to use client information here, but this is actually the top of my screen, which I really like because I can see all the companies that we have listed on HubSpot, all the ones that are associated with me, meaning that I do work for them, or all of our active clients. And that means these are active clients. They're not just, you know, community members or things like that. So it's just really easy to save these snapshots at a glance. Uh, my three tips for you, analyzing what you want to track. When you are creating a system, you need to know what you want to track. Because if you just have a brain dump, you can make 70 different categories for things. Which ones are you going to use? Are you going to use active clients versus inactive clients? Are you going to use prospective clients versus community members? It depends for you and your situation, but doing that up front, and then every time somebody comes in, you fill out the necessary information. You make sure that they fill that out every time so that you can label them correctly. Uh, next one is the creating favorite views. Uh, that's what I have up here. These are my favorite views. So I can just click these and go where I want to within HubSpot for companies. And then this, this, is the, this is the major thing that I really want to get across, developing a process for keeping your contacts up to date. If you do not keep your contacts up to date, it doesn't matter. Garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. So um, here we have a lot of processes in place to make sure that we're routinely revisiting email addresses, phone numbers, addresses, making sure that we have a system so that, you know, Every three years, you don't look at it and say, oh, this is all junk. Instead, break it down into small pieces and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. And then we're going to see this through. Helps out a lot. And it's not a ton of time if you keep it in that maintenance mode. So that, that, that's, uh, that can really help out. Next up here, we're going to be talking about MailChimp. Um, Claire already brought up Constant Contact. I really like Constant Contact a great deal. Uh, Constant Contact does not have a free version and MailChimp does. And a number of the clients that I work with have MailChimp. I was actually using MailChimp today. Um, uh, things have changed with email marketing. So think about this like a pendulum. 
there was a, a very, very long time, really in the 90s, where every single thing was going out through email. If you want to reach people, you want to use email. And then in the early 2000s, there, email, the pendulum was swinging and email seemed to fall out of favor. So people were saying, nope, people aren't reading this stuff anymore. Pe nope, people aren't going to, you're not going to get your ROI. Nope, you're not doing this. And now that pendulum is swinging back. We are inundated with information all the time in every facet of our lives. And what ended, what, what ended up happening is that now people are using email again, and they're engaging with it. You need to make sure you're hitting their email boxes. So make sure that you're like not hitting a firewall or something like that. But as long as you're whitelisted and you can move through to their inboxes, you are reaching the people that you want to, to reach. Uh, number two, I think that you can be using graphics. You can engage with your con uh, your audience and when, when you reach them so that um, you know, we're, we're used to social media. Everything's pretty pictures, pretty pictures, pretty pictures. Email doesn't just have to be text. Even if you're releasing a newsletter, there needs to be some graphical content with that. And then third, uh, there's some consistency. You can reach people on a regular routine basis. This is actually what Mike just brought up, hitting the nail on the head, okay? So it doesn't matter what your industry is, the more that you're in the minds of your contact base, the better off you are. Now, when you want to reach them, you don't want to spam them, okay? So this isn't, oh, okay, well, Matt told me to reach them as much as possible. What I should do is I should send them an email three times a day, every single day, right? That's what he said, right? Not what I'm saying. You need to hit them with solid content. You need to provide them with value. And how do you do that? You do it with things like this. Um, you, know, you receive this email through all of, you know, the FIFIC channels, either on social or through email to say like, hey, this is a free webinar. Come to this and, and learn something. And it's an opportunity um, to, to, to really integrate there. Does MailChimp integrate with HubSpot? Yes, there are integrations uh, for that. And um, so you can actually make it so that they link up and sync together so that when you add something to HubSpot, it's immediately in your MailChimp list um, so that you're not moving things from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place. Uh, it really limits human error that way. Uh, now I have my three tips and takeaways for MailChimp. Uh, just real quick, this is, this is a little picture from MailChimp, just a blank email, literally at recipients from subject line content it's very easy it's it's a plug and play you're going to start to see that in a lot of these things that we're going to be talking about today it's, it's pretty simple for what what you need to do to, to move from things from point a to point b so number one personalization and this is again what i think mike was kind of hammering on about when you're using those labels that we talked about with hubspot you are segmenting your list by segmenting your list, you can speak to people directly, okay? So let's say somebody comes to Mike for a particular type of service that he provides, okay? The, then if he has content based on that service, he can send that to them. And maybe the other clients that come that are really interested in that, he doesn't have to spam them with information that they might not be interested in. So you can get a little bit more granular, you can get a little bit more specific. And I think that that really helps with engaging. Number two here, tracking. MailChimp in the totally free version allows you to track everything. Every link that you have, it can tell you how many people click that link. It can show you when people opened it, can show you uh, how many times each person opened it. There are a ton of great metrics. Use those tracking metrics. Make sure to do something with it. Uh, for example, if, if you are sending emails every morning at 9 a.m. and you're noticing that all of your emails are being opened at 1 p.m., maybe change the time that you're sending them because people are, your, your client base isn't opening emails at that time. Uh, and I think that it's always good to look at those types of analytics and metrics and figure things out. And third and finally, provide value. Um, talking about marketing in general, 
that's really what people want. And that's what Mike and his shop just do so well. They provide value all the time. Um, sure, th there are there are people who have succeeded by saying, hey, look how great I am. Hey, look how great I am. Really, people want you to provide value. That's uh, at Donnelly Bowling, we provide these, these types of services where we just go on and do webinars and um, we want to be a resource for people. And if you can do that in your emails, you can really connect with people. And I think that can really help. And it doesn't have to be you creating all of the content. It's always good if you can create the content, but if all you're doing is passing content that you think is a, of interest to your customer, it's coming from you. So that's the most important thing. I mean, just reaching out and saying, hey, I thought of you. I thought you might find this article interesting. It's as simple as that. It's as no, simple I, as that. And I, I, I one time uh, learned in a marketing course, um, the idea that, it's like someone else gives you a gift and you gift wrap it and give it to somebody else. And, you know, you didn't do the legwork to buy the gift, but you, you did gift wrap it and you did hand it to the other person and that can go a long way. Uh, next there, up there's here, a, yeah, there is a difference between advertisement communications and substantive marketing communication, content sure. marketing, right? Content marketing is saying, here's something that I think is interesting to you. It's not just a sales pitch, right? Absolutely. Um, so I have an incredibly quick video here for you. This is, th these two uh, websites are completely foundational and instrumental. If you don't know them, look at them right now. Pixels on Splash. These are free stock photos, okay? I, cr I, I did this on my phone and I want you to see exactly how easy this is. To get a video or a picture, okay? Type in pexels.com. You click on the first link that comes up and then you type in accounting. Sure, you spell it wrong like I did. And then you go right in here. Here, there's 1.9 thousand photos and 508 video. You go to the video. Oh, look at that video. You can download it directly from here with that free download button. You do not have to sign up. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You can get free videos and free um, pictures on both of these sites all of the time. Stock photos and stock videos are instrumental to really trying to get your message across. So what you can do is you, you know, you, you have your HubSpot, you, you have your, your contacts in there. Then the, the next part is you want to send out emails, but where do you get the content for the email? Okay, well, I, I'm going to package this content with some nice photos to make this a little bit more engaging. I think that using something like Pexels and Unsplash can go a long way. I have been using Unsplash for several years. Uh, glad to know about Pexels. Glad to check it out. And it's crazy. Unsplash is definitely more well known. I love Pexels. So they're both two completely free websites. What's happening is individuals who are aspiring photographers, like this person right here, they just and like you can donate to them if you want it to, that they're putting on their content for people to consume. That's what they're doing here. Um, three quick takeaways from these two types of websites. Save your pictures for future use, okay? Um, if you have you know, a database or something, or if you just wanna use something like a Google Drive, what you can do is you can, hey, this is a really great picture. So that every time you're not going back and trying to find a new picture and a new caption, sometimes you can repurpose some content. Number two is find the right picture. Um, take some time to think about the pictures that you're using because sometimes it, things are so easy that we forget Ah, like, what, what am I really trying to go for here? Uh, think about the emotion that you're trying to get out of a person and take 10 seconds, take 15 seconds to just think about some of the pictures that you're looking for. And then the third thing here is consistency. I'm going to be bringing that up throughout this session today. And consistency in pictures, uh, determine what types of pictures you want to use. Um, do you want to use pictures with people's faces in them? Do you want to use pictures of you know, what, what like genre, what ethos, what, what do you want to convey, convey with those types of pictures? Um, so I, I think that that is you know, just you know, something to, to really consider and think about.
Okay, so that was pillar number one. That was the direct marketing. This is pillar number two, and this is social networks. Uh, right now, what I want to do is I would like for people to use the, the chat pod, just the chat pod, not the Q&A pod, and type in uh, what social media um, channels you're using right now. Do you use Facebook? Do you use Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok? Do you use YouTube? What are you typically using right now for social media? If you're not using anything, say not using anything. Facebook and LinkedIn. All right. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Facebook. Let's see. I use each one, but I'm not sure if consistently that, that's that's important. Uh, mostly Facebook, although I do have a LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, uh, TikTok, MeWe, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Love it. First of all, that's great. The, the fact that so many people are using different uh, social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, that, that's, that's incredibly important. Um, uh, nothing to build on Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, you have to pay attention to the demographics of the users of each of the, those apps. Yes. Um, so, so Mike asked the question, do you have to pay attention to each one of the demographics of the users of those apps? And the answer is absolutely yes. However, however, most people don't realize the number of people using the apps who actually affect what you're doing. Let me explain what I mean there. Okay, actually, I'm gonna, gonna jump off real quick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hone in on this one because this isn't part of my presentation. When people look at overarching demographics, and let's let's use TikTok for example, and people say something like this, they say, "Oh, well, TikTok is for people under 20 years old." First of all, TikTok was mainly for people under 20 years old prior to the pandemic. In the pandemic. TikTok became for people in their teens through late 20s. In 2021, TikTok started trending upwards in age. And now every single quarter, TikTok is showing more and more people using TikTok in the older demographic. But more importantly than that, you need to think about what you need. Sure, hitting the, the majority of people is what you're looking for. Are you really looking for a billion new customers or are you looking for 10 new customers? So sometimes using the counterintuitive option and using a platform that maybe other people in your industry aren't using might be a really good way to break in to that. So uh, I, I look back at Facebook. There was a time on Facebook where there were very, very, very few uh, accountants on Facebook. Just it, it wasn't a place for accounting. That's LinkedIn, not, not Facebook. Uh, unfortunately, Donnelly Bullen was not one of the first to be on uh, Facebook, but I was campaigning for us to be on Facebook at that time. And then it started to saturate. And then more and more accountants got on Facebook and more and more and started to kind of almost consume itself. And there are so many people on Facebook. So what I would what I would ask you to do is not just thinking about not just think about, OK, this is exactly my demographic and this is exactly where I need to be. Also. Think about what types of content could I make for this platform? Does my business have a story to tell on this platform? If it does, I would encourage you to consider and think about. Uh, I was actually just at a, a conference not too long ago and someone was talking about TikTok and saying TikTok should be where everyone's thinking about using. And a person raised her hand and said, well, you know, you know, I, I am selling commercial real estate. I, I, don't, I don't need to be on TikTok. I don't want to do dances. And then the speaker was like, actually, you should be. And, he, and then he, he listed off of a bunch of reasons why he could repurpose her content for that type of, uh, for that type of audience. But um, I, I noticed that a lot of people are using different platforms. That's great. But uh, the, the one comment I was a while back there said that sometimes, um, you know, not everything is up to date. Manage what you can manage. 
I, I would prefer to use one or two social platforms really, really well than using 10 social platforms and none of them are that great because it, it does get overwhelming. There is a lot that's going on. Right, and you can use some of those free tools to post. One post will go to multiple locations, but you might be limited on, on the number of, of um, accounts or apps that you can link to your for, for the free CRM, right? Absolutely, yep. Okay, so now as we get into social networks, I'm gonna talk about three things under this pillar. One is Canva, two is Facebook scheduling, and three is Google My Business. Uh, I will note that Google My Business kind of belongs in web. Google considers it a social network, so I listed it there. Um, it's in that in-between zone. I don't think I didn't think about it. I, 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 I really took this one to heart, okay? Uh, so first up here is Canva. Uh, Canva is a tool to create graphical content, okay? If you're looking for content creation and you don't know where to start, start with Canva. Uh, you can um, really use this to create good, rich graphical content. It is incredibly easy to use. You do not need to be a, a graphic designer. Also, I will say that you can use uh, a lot on their mobile site. Their, their mobile on the phone is wonderful, uh, really, really easy to do, really easy to use. And right here, I have another video for you. As a gra like I, I do graphic design, okay? And there are times where I'm using the entire Adobe suite. I'm using Illustrator, I'm using Photoshop, I'm using Adobe Premiere, I'm using InDesign, I'm using Lightroom. All of those things are incredibly important and they can do very, very specific things. Canva is more limited, no doubt about that, but it doesn't mean you can't get very good things out of Canva. So this is a 40 second video of me creating an ad on Canva, okay? You can sign up for a free account, completely free, and go into the top and you type in Father's Day. I wanna create a Father's Day uh, message. I look through the templates, scroll, 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 and I found one that I like. I click it, oh, but it's not my colors. I click the colors, it has my primary palette in here because uh, you set that up with your brand. So it made them the green of Donnelly Boland, uh, but that's not good enough. I want my logo in here. Scroll over, look for my logo that's already uploaded in here, click my logo, and I can resize this put it where I want. And this is on mobile too. This isn't even on a computer. And I go to mobile and I export it. That's it. In 40 seconds, I went and I created a graphic. I am not going to pretend to you here that everything is this easy. I am not going to pretend that there's not value in real in-depth graphic design. There is. But when you're creating content, Sometimes you just want to move things from point A to point B. There, uh, you can take some of the pictures from Pexels or Unsplash, dump them in here, put your logo on top of them. Uh, you can brand them any way you want. You can also um, you can also reuse content too. So after you make something in Canva, you can go back and tweak it and edit it the way that you want. My three takeaways for Canva is that you should use their templates. Their templates are wonderful, 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 really great. Uh, develop a theme for your brand. Spend time doing that at the beginning, making sure you're using your colors, make sure that you have your logo in there. Uh, this is going to save you a lot of time. And then third and finally, this is where the, the there, there's kind of a, a struggle between quality versus quantity. And we're at a very, very unique time because um, there are a lot of things that show you, you need to be posting all the time and not everything needs to take forever to do. So this is where you need to find that balance. You always, always wanna have quality content. You don't want bad content going up. That's never going to help you. But at the same time, you can't let great get in the way of good. Sometimes good is good enough and you need to make moves and move. And Canva is a really great way to do that. A bunch of things in the chat here. Uh, Canva is the best. 
If you never use it, uh, check it out ASAP. Absolutely. I have a free Canva account, but I found their selection is very limited. Am I missing something? Not wanting to upgrade or pay? Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. Um, they, they, their templates and their pictures and everything that you can use are very are, are limited. Uh, th this graphic right here is actually one of the free ones. Um, so there are things to do as you move up and you want to pay for one. Um, so it gets easier to do, but uh, the free one still has a lot that you can do on there and you can get other free picks uh, from Unsplash and Pixels and upload them. That's exactly what, what my advice would have been. So if they don't have what you're looking for, you can transfer them right over. Uh, another great free tool to use for graphic design. Yep, Flatcon. Uh, this is great for the for the little icons to use um, for, for different things. That's actually absolutely a great call. So we're moving forward to Facebook scheduling. Um, Facebook scheduling is a really unique tool because a lot of the scheduling apps like Hootsuite cost money and Facebook scheduling does not. And the reason the Facebook scheduling does not cost money uh, isn't because of the benevolent heart of the people who work at Facebook. Really, it's because they want you to do more paid ads. And the more that your time that you're spending, they want you to do paid ads. But there's a lot that you can get out of Facebook scheduling. One, you can batch content. Uh, so I, I have gone into several different organizations to run their social media. And I hear the same refrain all the time. I get up and I say, I need to post something today. And then I make the content and then I go and post it. And two days later, I say, I need to make something today. It's just so hard and you're stuck in that cycle of just create, post, create, post, create, post. Break the cycle, batch content. Set aside two hours to batch a number of pieces of information and start posting, posting them through Facebook Scheduler so that you can do that. Uh, their, their calendar feature, which is seen over here to the left, is really cool now. This is in their meta suite. Um, I really like this because you can see how frequently you post, uh, what your engagement is like. And then third and finally, you can repurpose uh, your post. So that means there are certain things that are going to have a shelf life. So you want to post something that was a hot button that single day. Well, you're not going to post that again. So you know, Claire is not going to post on social media the invitation for this event. It's over, you know, but maybe she's going to you know, make the YouTube video and put that together and then post that on social media. And then three months later, she's going to post it again. That's totally fine because not everybody saw it that time. Maybe not everybody had an opportunity to engage with it at that time. So the more content that you create, better you can get it reposting without it feeling like the same thing all the time, all the time, all the time. My three tips for Facebook scheduling. One, Facebook and Instagram are not the same. When you use a site uh, to schedule everything out from one, you run into a lot of risks. One of the risks that you have is, let's say Claire wanted to do this and she's trying to schedule the YouTube video go on Facebook and on Instagram. Instagram doesn't use URLs. So now you've created a URL that you can't click. Well, people could type it in. Nobody's typing it in. No one is typing it in. Don't think that anyone is typing it in. So that's a problem. And then problem number two, that Instagram actually pushes that down on their algorithm because you use the wrong format for them. So even if you're using a place like Hootsuite to, to push out content, realize that each of the platforms does slightly different things. Pay attention to that when you're doing, when you're using them. Number two, in the Facebook scheduler, as you uh, scroll over things, you can see the metrics. So you can see how many people you've reached, how many people engaged. Um, I think that, that that's a really good way to um, stay on top of making sure that you're producing good content. What are people getting the most value out of? What are people clicking the most? What are people liking the most? What are people sharing the most? If you are spending two hours every week on something and it's not getting any engagement, nobody seems to like it, why aren't they getting that engagement? Use those metrics and try to leverage that. Finally, uh, use Facebook 
guide your other social media channels. So if you're looking to stay at that free level, what I would suggest you do is schedule everything in Facebook. And then when you want to use your other channels, use that as your reminder, oh, I need to post that to these other channels today. So even if you're looking for a completely free way to go, you can use it that way. Uh, how do we access this in Facebook? I have a number of posts I have to make. Uh, okay, so uh, what you can do for, so um, I schedule for posts for different groups. Um, groups are gonna be different um, unless you are the, like, it, it, unless you are like the active leader for that group. As long as you're an administrator, you should be able to go into the, uh, Google or the My Business Suite, now called the Meta Suite, and right in there, uh, the Meta Suite has a, a place for you to jump on and um, find like the scheduling part of the app. Uh, if you're having trouble with that, um, my contact information is right here. I am sending that to everyone. That's my email address. If you're having uh, trouble with that, shoot me an email. And I'll, I'll send you uh, the, the, the path to do that. Uh, do you have something, Mike? I think you're muted. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Okay. So we, we covered Canva. We covered uh, Facebook scheduling. And now we're going to go to Google My Business. Like I said before, I'm not entirely sure I agree that this is a social network. Uh, they call it a social network. Uh, if you search for Donnelly Boland, this little thing comes up on Google on your uh, on, on a, um, on a desktop. And this is our My Google Business page. Google matters. Don't think for a second that Google doesn't matter, okay? Um, this is where people find you, and this is going to be their first impression of you. So even if they type in your name and they don't go directly to your website, they, they're going to see this. And if this isn't claimed, there could be, a, there could be inaccuracies or problems with that. Um, so number one, Google matters. This is, what, this is where Google wants you to be, so they're going to give you preferential treatment for that. So by updating this and keeping this information accurate, they are going to boost your SEO. Additionally, uh, the better Google reviews you get, uh, we have a five-star overall rating with 22 reviews, the more that they're gonna pump your business up. And that's really, really important. Also, after this session is over, I'm gonna ask if anyone really loved this session and wanted to give us a Google review, do that, that helps out and I really appreciate it. Uh, and then also, Accurate info only. You need to make sure that this is updated and accurate. If this is not accurate, this could cause a, a whole ton of problems. Okay, so people need to know who you are and what your hours are and things like that. Even like with uh, the holiday coming up on Monday, go and change your Google page to say that you're closed on Monday. Even saying you're closed helps you in Google's SEO. So when people are searching for your, like even things around your genre, your industry, they're gonna pop you up closer to the top. Uh, Google My Business, here are three tips that I have for you. Own the page today. Uh, what I want to do in the chat right now, how many people own their Google My Business page? You can just type Y or N. Um, and, um, Okay, we got one, yes. Um, so Jimmy wrote, he's not sure if Google My Business is really worth it. The answer is absolutely 100% yes. Uh, you do not have to spend a ton of time on this. You, uh, right now, we are kind of going on like an aggressive approach by updating it once a week. It takes under five minutes to update it once a week. We just switch pictures out. We have a whole little system here. Uh, but it helps with our SEO. Um, okay, it's definitely so, easy to overlook, and we yeah. we you can you can put posts on there as well. Yep, substantive Perfect. posts and links. Yep. So we do that on a regular basis too, and it definitely gets you it gets you views. It absolutely yep. does. Yeah. So so if enough people are searching for your business, it can be created for you. Uh, and for those of you who have uh, a physical presence, it's it's often created for you, but um, 
Sometimes it's not, you can go on and request it. It takes a couple of days and then they, they get you to where you need to be. And Google reviews matter. Google reviews take uh, a, a, a lot of the burden off of trying to prove yourself to other people. If you have to, if you have to run around and tell everyone, hey, we're great, we're great, we're great. Sometimes that doesn't always resonate. But if people go online and see all these people are saying you're great, it really can go a long way. And then also you can go back to those stock images and use those stock images to update your post. So if you wanna post on there, you can do very basic posts. Posting once a week is more than enough. Great, if you ever run events and things like that, you can uh, highlight events on there. And that can be a really great way to make sure that that's updated and accurate. The, uh, the Google Business Suite will also give you a link that you can send to your customers to request that they give you a review yep, as well. Absolutely. So they do try to make it relatively easy for you to do that. Yeah, and, and Anne wrote on here, that is where I look for reviews. Uh, a, a joke that I have brought up several times, uh, I, I, I trust my sister implicitly with everything. And she told me to get, uh, I, I was looking for a, a new air conditioner a couple of years ago. And she said, we had this great experience. This was the company. I looked them up online and they had a 2.1 star, no way. And she might've just had the one off. They, they had 60 reviews and a 2.1 star, not good enough. So as much as I love my sister, I trust the Google reviews even more. <laughs> so uh, people really do go to those as a one-stop shop. Um, I have more than one Google My Business page. I have one. Uh, yes, you can. You can have them for, for different entity, like different locations. Um, and I know it can help. I have a website. As more people are writing, it's moving it around. Uh, fully put back up and it gets views on the little bit SEO I did. Uh, yep. A, a lot of those things can help. So I totally, totally review this one today. If you don't own it, own it. Uh, our last and final pillar is going to be on web. And today we're just gonna be covering two different sections on this one. One is going to be Wix and two is going to be Hotjar. If you, um, let me see here. Um, go here. There's another poll question. When was your last? When was your website last updated? Was it updated in the last six months? Within the last two years? Not since we made it? Or do not have a website? I'm liking these answers. Watch out. Get in the poll in about five seconds. Or, whoa, more coming in. All right, all right. Uh, share results here. Um, right now, 67%, well over half, uh, have updated it in the last six months. That's wonderful. Um, there was this idea where you had to update your website every couple of years. No longer the case. Uh, for SEO, for to continue to populate, you really want to update it frequently. Make sure that it's up to date can reach you, accessible. Uh, some people haven't updated it since it was made and then others do not have a website. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today is if you don't have a website, it's okay. This might be a really quick and easy tool to get started. Um, there are some instances where people don't need websites. I get that, I know that, but they're few and far between. I, I really, really believe that Almost all businesses should have their own website, even for nothing else other than just contact information. Even if you were like, ah, my industry is a little bit unique. Ah, I don't really want have a place for people to go so they know where to contact you. Um, any okay, I have a question right here that I'm going to live answer. Any suggestions about whom you recommend for a web developer? Um, probably me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Honestly, uh, we, we do websites here. Um, one of the things that, uh, and actually let me jump into the Wix because I'm actually going to answer some of this here. Um, one of the things about Wix is that it is super simple to use. And if you're looking to offload some of this, um, Wix is a really good opportunity because you can have somebody else make your website 
and then give it to you and you can update. And that's what we've done now for a ton of different organizations. Um, so if you use something that is, let's say WordPress, okay, I've made some sites on WordPress and they're a lot more involved. I can't give you WordPress if you have no knowledge about it for you to figure it out. Just, you're not going to know. If I build a site for you and hand over a Wix site to you, you, you have very, very limited knowledge and you can say, oh, wow, I can, I can do these changes. I can make this change. Um, so it's incredibly user-friendly. About 10 years ago, um, there was a stigma with Wix, Squarespace, Shopify. These are just garbage. They're terrible uh, site builders. They can't do what the other things do. And uh, I, I won't tell you people who said things like that. Me, it was me. I was a person who said things like that. And I just said, there's just no way. You can't just make a site builder be this good. And then about five years ago, everything changed. And what Wix did was Wix introduced developer portion. So you can code anything in addition to the plug and play. So you can just put little things in, if you have something super specific that you want to code, you still can. So the graphic people, the web developers who used to say, no, Wix can't do what this other thing can do. It can't do that. It can't do that. Now it can. It can do all the easy stuff. But it also is robust enough to handle all the hard stuff. So you can hard code anything you want into Wix, or you can just make a site builder and then put things where they need to be. So it's really the best of both worlds. There is one negative takeaway from Wix, one. I've looked up every single thing that I could find online, read the articles. I did the research so you didn't have to. The one thing is if you host it, you need to host it on Wix. So you made a website on Wix, you can't host it somewhere else. It has to be hosted on Wix. So you're, you're locked into their hosting. So if you had an existing hosting somewhere else, can't use it somewhere else. You have to use it directly on Wix. Um, may I have your contact information on your website? Yes, uh, I, I will get you everything you need. So uh, that's perfect. Um, and uh, also in the chat here, we have a couple things. I've been hearing multiple listings. You uh, need website development referral. One of the things I heard is that website these days need to be ADA compliant. Yes, absolutely. Great call. Uh, are there free tools available to make sure the website is ADA compliant? Yes, in Wix, there are actual things that check each one of your pages to make sure they're uh, compliant with ADA, ADA regulations. Wonderful. Is Wix free? Yes, Wix is totally free, but if you want your own URL, so like Bolin.com, you need to pay for that, but you can build it for free. You can host it for free. The domain is what costs money. So as soon as you get to that point, then do that. But up until that point, nothing costs anything. And you can build your entire site for free, look at it and say, do I want to do this or don't I? Whereas other things you would have to buy into from the beginning. Uh, great call with the ADA compliance stuff. It's very good. Uh, more than just following regulations, Google smashes you on SEO if you're not VA compliant. So you really want to make sure that there aren't any problems with your site that way. Um, yeah, and then it's almost comparable to using a site like Medium or Google Sites. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can uh, so you can redirect from GoDaddy. You can buy the the actual um, URL from GoDaddy, you can buy the domain, but it actually needs to be host. When you're using a unique URL, you have to be hosting it on Wix. That's like their one tech takeaway. Uh, then the last thing here, real-time updates. Uh, outdated websites are, are detriments to your SEO, but you need to make sure that they're updated routinely, regularly. Uh, this really helps out. Three takeaways. Um, here, one, mobile friendly first, you need to make a mobile web uh, friendly website. More people than ever, every single year. If you look at the, the graphs, they are continue to show increased traffic in mobile, increased traffic in desktop. Doesn't mean desktop isn't important. Don't need to be using desktop. 
you need to be aware of the mobile stuff first. Uh, pay attention to the SEO. I, I actually brought this out when you're inside the page. This is actually a website that I'm building for someone right now. Um, marketing and SEO. Then they have all of these different functions. They have uh, connect ins with your social, with your Google business profile, Facebook and Instagram, with your email marketing, connect in with HubSpot. This helps. So you're using keywords on each one of the pages. And then finally, update your site frequently the right way. And what that means is you can update pictures anytime you want. You don't want to be overhauling your text all the time because Google is scanning your page and trying to learn from you and trying to put it where it needs to go. So if you have keywords, you don't want to change your keywords all the time. So make sure that you are kind of focused in on that. Um, Last thing that I'm going to cover today is going to be Hotjar Analytics. Hotjar, it's visual. Sometimes formal data is just overwhelming. So sometimes it, uh, what Hotjar is, it's a way for you to track things on your website. So it's going to be giving you metrics. You can get metrics directly on Wix, which are okay. But the ones on Hotjar are just better. They're just better. Uh, they, they can explain uh, consumer behavior and they can tell you exactly what's happening on your website. They can tell you where people are using their mouse, what pages they're spending time on, what things they're clicking, how much time each person spends. It limits you on the free version for how many you can see per month. So I think it's 10 instances per month and then it stops you with the free version, but it's still a really good opportunity for you to see, okay, this is oh, I never thought that people would be landing on this page first. I didn't know that they were always going to be clicking on this link, but never on this one. And um, one example that uh, I had a client run through, they had their logo in the top left and their logo, you, you, very common thing, your logo on your screen, when you click it, it should always go back to your homepage. Theirs didn't go back to their homepage. And when I showed them their hot jar analytics, there, there were people who were taking their mouse and then click, 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 click. And there's nothing to click to there. And it was a simple fix. They just needed to fix it for five minutes and go in and make that clickable to go right to their homepage. But that is something that happens a lot. So you can actually learn and garner information from what you're doing there. Um, one of the nice things is you can see where okay, people are coming to the homepage, the pricing page, okay, where are your conversion rates? You can see how many sessions. Um, there are a lot of different uh, metrics and in, in analytics that you can find in this. Number one, takeaways, don't overreact on this. Um, sometimes people are like, five people visited my website and they didn't do what I wanted to. I need to change everything. Give it some time, give it a couple months, see how people are reacting. Uh, look for trends. So don't just look at one person and say, they're on my website for five seconds and they left. You don't know, maybe they got a phone call. So you, there could have been a bunch of reasons. So you wanna let that time play out. And then also respond to findings in meaningful ways. So when you start seeing that people are doing the same thing, like going on that top left corner and clicking your logo, but it's not going anywhere, make sure that they're doing something with that. Um, so, that's what I had for you today. I know I was kind of flying through some things. I really wanted to try to keep the time. And here are my takeaways from today's session. These aren't just like, hey, go get these pages because that's the stuff we already went over. This is more about the grand, like the, the, not the granular, this is the big picture stuff. Utilize free resources before you start paying for the premium version of the products. Um, I, 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 I can't tell you how many times people are like, oh, someone told me to get this, so I bought it. And now I'm spending $20 a month on, on this service that I never use. Maybe it does make sense for your business. Maybe it doesn't. Figure that out beforehand. Use the free versions and see if they work. Um, these are all things that I have found to be good. But maybe for you, one of the things does it, it's not going to meet what you need. Utilize the free version and see if it's a good fit for you. Number two, uh, free resources does not mean free. Remember that there's a learning curve, the time investment, and the ongoing maintenance of these things. So Google My Business is free. You have to go on and you have to post on it and you need to make sure that you're there. And you know something like HubSpot 
is free, but you need to go on there and utilize your time well. So yeah, you might not be spending any hard costs. You might not be spending so much money a month. But it's taking up your time. You're, you're learning it. You're, you're dedicating the time to it. There's a lot that goes into it. And then finally, I, I want to say that you've got this, okay? That we are, we are at an absolutely astonishing time with online free resources. Spend the time to learn how to leverage these resources to grow your business. This can work. This can help. I, I really want for you to use today as the, the kickoff point. This is the, the time for you to say, you know what? I wasn't doing this before, but now I can be. Uh, a couple things in the chat. Thanks for the information. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Here's my contact information. Um, so that, that's my cell phone number and that's my email address. Uh, feel free to call, contact me. Um, if you have questions, you have issues, you have things that you're running into, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not much for a hard sell. That's, that's not really why we, why we do these. We wanna, see, we wanna be seen as a resource. If you need support, we're here. We have a team that is really good and can really help provide people with things. And I know that um, it's fun going in there and working with people and trying to get trying to get the most out of what you can. But if, if you're on a shoestring budget and you don't have any marketing dollars to spend right now, use the free resources I gave you. And then in three years, when your business blows up and you need my help, call me then. I'll still be here. All right. Uh, yeah, it's all good stuff, Matt. It, it, sometimes it's just a matter of brainstorming. Okay, what is this conceptualizing it for you? What should I do when getting a schedule in place? And just saying, hey, you know, I'm going to start off by doing one post a week. You know what I mean? Kind of a thing. Maybe it's one post on one site a week, but get yourself, you know, build up to, to the whole thing, right? You don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to do it all perfect. You know, you can build, just have a goal you know, and just a small goal, make that. And then the next week do 1% better and then 1% better. And pretty soon it, it'll, 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 it'll um, take off for you, right? It'll take I, off for you. I, I absolutely love, I, I love that, Mike, because I think that what it comes down to is sometimes any, any part of your business is just going to feel overwhelming. Okay. The first time you had to go to a lawyer felt overwhelming. The first time you had to go to a tax person feels overwhelming. When you're doing all this, okay, well, okay, I need a website. I need, I need an email address. I, I, I need to put on all these sites. I need to post all these. It's hard. And, um, and what, what I, I like to talk to clients about all the time is I could show you how to do this. I, I could absolutely show you how to do this. But what it comes down to is sometimes like, I could fix a plumbing issue, but how long is that taking me? Is that the best use of my time or is it better for me to call a plumber? And it needs to be up to you and your situation to know when, when you can afford a plumber, when your time is best used doing something else. And if you have the time right now to engage with these types of things and you can do your own marketing, go for it. Absolutely. I, I, I think that's great. Um, when you need help, feel free to reach out. 